<coughs> Go live? Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the um, council meeting on March 8th. Um, we were a little bit late getting back, but we believe we have um, Councillor Burden on on the uh, the line now. So uh, remind everybody that the meeting is live streamed and recorded and available on the internet by visiting the Town of Perry Sound's website at www.perrysound.ca. So a little note before we get started. The uh, public consultation with respect to the 2020 operating and capital budget began with the presentation of a budget overview, overview on February the 4th, followed by the detailed draft 2020 budget package that was discussed at the February 27th special council meeting. That meeting staff were directed to report back to a special council meeting with responses to questions that were raised at the February 27th meeting. The purpose of this evening's meeting is to review the responses. With the uncertainty of timing of future council meetings, I believe it's important to approve the budget this evening. And once the budget is approved, staff can begin to undertake the necessary work. Subject to any adjustments this evening, I'm very pleased to advise that the property tax increase to fund Town of Perry Sound's operations is only 1.2%, which is $131,478. This increase is below the council-approved policy framework for tax increases relative to CPI, and CPI was 2.1%. <clears throat> The main challenge encountered in the 2020 operating budget is an estimated loss of $239,000 in revenue attributed to property tax exemption for a, of additional affordable housing projects in the town under the relief of the poor provision of the Assessment Act. Although much of this lost revenue was able to be offset, a portion had to be recovered through a tax increase. Aging infrastructure is a challenge faced by all municipalities and in 2014, Council committed to an increase funding for the town's infrastructure with an additional 1.8% tax increase annually. Following on that commitment, the combined increase for 2020 is 3%, 1.2% plus 1.8%. Now, uh, may I have a mover and seconder for the agenda, please? Councillor, or do we have, no we don't, okay. Uh, Councillor Keith and Councillor Backman, that the council agenda for March 18th, 2020 be approved as circulated, all in favor? That's carried. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none. Uh, okay, we're into 911, which is operating and capital budget. And I see Mr. Harris, you want to start off? As, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. What uh, so what you have attached are the uh, as a additional information attached to the agenda that went out last Friday. Our list of all the questions, uh, and perhaps uh, our director of finance could just take us very quickly down through the agenda. What the original question was, and just a synopsis of what staff's response is. And uh, in a couple of cases, there are recommendations. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, so on uh, the first item, which is provided in the additional information section behind the report uh, in your agenda, uh, that item is uh, Perry Sound Drive ditching. So more information was requested at the last budget meeting regarding that. Um, and the, the background information here elaborates to go on and uh, identify that the culvert lining project is also um, connected with the Perry Sound Drive ditching project, uh, which is $150,000. So that, and the ditching is $60,000. So those combined are $210,000. Um, the ditching is directly related to uh, the culvert drainage issue. So that's the, ca the cause of it. Does the council have any additional questions related to that project? And the work is up near the YMCA. Uh, there's yeah. some flooding on Smith Crescent as well. Councilor Borneman? Yes, yeah, so 
So the uh, culvert lining project was actually ident identified in 2019, and it was originally planned to be funded from um, OSIF funding. So these these two projects both are planned to be funded from OSIF. No, yeah, no impact. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So the next. Yep. The next project is the operations yard paving project, which is uh, in the proposed 2020 budget for $130,000. Uh, this project includes um, the drive-through area into uh, the transfer station where um, there is a drive-through traffic related to the uh, household hazardous waste depot. Um, and um, the condition of the pavement there is providing difficulties with uh, uh, snow removal and, and other issues in the in the yard. So I am going to ask council a question here. As we go through this, we have a staff recommendation, which I think we should approve uh, on each one. Do you want to approve them right after we've had our conversation about this so, so we can do this as mm -hmm. we go along? Sure. So the first recommendation, okay, I'm going to back up just for a moment. Ms. Sure. Phelps. Yep. So the, the first one is that the amount of sixty thousand dollars in the twenty twenty budget to facilitate the work necessary to improve drainage and properly assess the condition of the culverts under Perry Sound Drive in the vicinity of Smith Crescent be approved for funding for the culvert lining project at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars be approved so the project can proceed if conditions allow for the completion of the works. Any further discussion on that one? All in favor then? That's carried. Okay. Now, are there any comments on the yard paving portion? Uh, Councillor Keith and then Councillor Borneman. Yes, I just wanted to have clarification. In doing this yard paving, because there has been patches and that's explained and so we'll, there would be a better job, what is going to happen to the paving that is remaining? Uh, what will, you know, because we're also concerned about the environment and I don't know if Mr. Cairns would be able to answer this or the financial director, like, will, will it be taken up, then ground up, and then what will happen to it or what happens, please? Yes, certainly. Uh, through your worship, um, so the asphalt currently in town um, is recycled. So we have an, an what's referred to as a, ha a hot asphalt recycler. So it actually doesn't need to be ground up. So the larger pieces of asphalt are placed in there and used as patching materials throughout town. So the one follow-up would be, okay, when do we figure out at this point the cost? Like it's almost like a bit of a savings in that if we are taking it up again and then using it really is a means of saving us money at the same time when we're using it somewhere else. Do we have any figures for that or is that something that would be thought of in the future so we can measure say some of how we are recycling using older and what we are saving? Certainly through you, your worship. Um, I'm not aware of the numbers having been calculated to this point, but it's certainly something we can do. Typically, uh, municipalities will use different materials to patch, cold patch being one of them that uh, you know can be purchased in bulk. So we can certainly do some calculations to estimate the savings. Uh, keeping in mind that the hot product that is going down is a more resilient product than the cold product uh, that has some convenience and speed to it, but doesn't tend to last as long. Uh, Councilor Warner. I just wanted to point out it, again that's from the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, so there is no impact on the tax rate. <clears throat> yeah. Any other questions? No? Uh, mover and seconder for that recommendation. Councilor McCann, Councilor Keith. Council approved the paving operations yard, including the road section through the transfer station in the 2020 budget for 130000 all in favor? That's carried. Thank the province for the OSIP funding, which is good. Pumpy station number five. All right. Uh, so really this uh, background information here is just provided because 
uh, a duplicate uh, ended up into the in the budget in error with a different title and it was identified and then one one of them is being removed for 20,000 so this has no impact on taxation but it's just a, a correction of an error um, and uh, that is just less money having to be taken out of the wastewater stabilization reserve. So that's been corrected in the proposed budget. Okay. Okay, any questions on that one? No? Over and seconder for the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Councillor Backman and Councillor Borneman. The budget of 40000 towards pumping station number five. Be revised to 20,000 funded from the wastewater stabilization reserve. All in favor of that? That's carried. Pumping station number six. So on this item uh, at the last uh, special council budget meeting, uh, more information was requested regarding the sewage yeah. pumping station six um, as it's uh, um, one of the major projects going uh, into the proposed 2020 budget. I think I, it would be best to um, maybe ask Mike to come up and elaborate if Council has some more questions. But the the amount of money that's required for the project is a $1.25 million uh, for 2020. So that's been reduced from the original um, estimate of uh, $1.25 uh, eight million altogether with the three items. Does council have any questions regarding the item? Councilor Borman, this is you know I support the, the 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 plan here. I just wonder, Mr. Cairns, is there some plan in place like pumping station six handles a really high amount of the wastewater in the community? How, how do we? What's the shutdown time, and how do we divert stuff for a period of time? to allow for this work to happen? Through you, Your Worship, uh, so there are, incorporated into the plans to do this work, uh, a significant portion of it involves uh, being able to do the work by bypassing, uh, not necessarily, sorry, bypassing the lift station. So um, there is a plan in place using some structures that are available down there to reroute flows to allow for the work to be undertaken. Um, but it is challenging, you're right. It's uh, all the work down there, um, given its flows, um, present unique challenges. So, um, it, my first inclination was to say, how quickly will this get underway? And, and But now having heard that, do we wait for a dry period through the summer months to undertake this, where the flows will hopefully be somewhat reduced? Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, I think uh, should we have approval tonight to proceed, uh, the actual work would not typically be able to be started until that time uh, once parts are ordered and, and contracts are, are set out. And there is a significant amount of work. Uh, a big portion of this has to do with meeting uh, new electrical code. Um, in a way, it's related to actually uh, fire prevention code. So this is all kind of a new world for those of us dealing with uh, sewage treatment. Um, they've instituted some regulations when we're rebuilding things uh, that did not necessarily have to be considered in the past, so. Council McCann. Thank you, for Mr. Kearns. I remember that we had uh, quite a discussion on this and, we, uh, and uh, can you refresh my memory? I, I remember asking, um, because we have issues with, uh, you know, when the storm sewers or, uh, flow into the uh, uh, sewage uh, system, that we get a, an overflow or, or a bypass situation at the pumps. Is this one of the pumps that uh, that's problematic, and will this fix, uh, help uh, curtail that? Through your worship, uh, this pump in particular that we're referring to is a, um, kind of what we'll refer to as a legacy pump within that lift station. Uh, it's one of the original pumps. Um, it's a different design. So we've had some internal discussions because there certainly is an anticipated um, gain in pumping efficiency by repla simply replacing something that's at the end of life to a new product should 
uh, realize some pumping efficiencies. Um, that being said, there's only so much water we can move through any given pipe. So um, staff are undertaking other initiatives, inflow and infiltration studies, and uh, wastewater staff uh, have access to flow meters. So we are actually tracking uh, and trying to narrow down particularly problematic areas to try and uh, focus on repairing and, and reducing those inflows. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Councillor Keith? Yes, I, I have one question, and uh, it just seems to me that uh, in uh, doing an, or meeting new code requirements, it uh, seems pretty logical that, uh, yes, it's going to cost more, and yet the estimate, after it's been re-examined, the estimate has dropped. Uh, and I'm just uh, having a little bit of difficulty thinking that the estimate would drop, and yet there's more expectations. Why would that be? Because I, I just, and I'll finish my, that's my main part of the question. My concern is that we end up not being on budgets, or we kind of cut ourselves a little too short. Mr. Harris? Yeah, through the mayor, I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, this, this project and the need for the uh, extra uh, code work related to electrical safety came up uh, after Mr. Brown had left and uh, in the absence of a director uh, there was an estimate we thought we need to we need to put something in the budget we didn't and so uh, we developed a, a rough estimate and that's how we started with 1.5 million we thought we'd start a little a little high make sure that we were good and then as, uh, as uh, our new director came on board, he's reviewed those estimates with staff and were able to come up with, uh, with a reduced estimate. So that, that's how the, the higher estimate started out. So, yeah. so Mr. Cairns, you feel fairly confident that this revised estimate should be hopefully on target? Through your worship, uh, yes. Um, short answer. There were some duplicated numbers, and it was just simply uh, sometimes it's it's how we refer to projects. Um, again, we, we saw that with one of the other pumping stations that it was duplicated the costs. So there was at one point one point five million um, with a two hundred thousand and then a one hundred thousand uh, dollar individual entry in the original um, numbers we were looking at. So there was another. Three hundred thousand dollars that was already included in that lump sum. So, we consulted with the engineers uh, who are designing the project for us, and uh, we're fairly confident in that estimate. Very good. Any further questions? Mover and seconder for the recommendation. Councillor McCann, Councillor Keith. Staff recommend one point two five million in the capital budget allocation for twenty twenty to begin the process of completing the necessarily upgrades to sewage pumping station number six. All in favor? That's carried. Lawnmowers. Okay. Yes. So there was a question posed at the uh, last budget meeting <clears throat> regarding whether the uh, two different models of mowers are are used at um, only Hillcrest Cemetery or. Hillcrest and uh, Sylvan Cemetery. Uh, so um, historically, we just called those moors uh, Hill, Hillcrest Cemetery moors because they were stored there, but they're actually used at both locations. Um, and then the report before you identifies uh, what types of work that the different mowers would be used for. Uh, so as part of the 20-year equipment replacement forecast, um, these mowers came up for replacement in 2020. Um, and staff recommend that we continue with the replacement of those mowers uh, along with the plan schedule. Questions? No? Okay. Um, See. So the recommendation is the mover and seconder first, Councillor Keith, Councillor Borneman. Continue with the equipment replacement of these moors as planned in the town's 20-year equipment replacement forecast. The moors are funded from the equipment replacement reserve. The town currently contributes $165,594 yearly to this reserve to fund the replacement of equipment that's currently operational. Further replacement of equipment at Hillcrest will be referred to as replacement of the cemetery equipment. 
to remove the connotation that is to be used to be used solely at that location. All in favor then? That's carried. Thank you. Furnace. <coughs> Sorry about that. The furnace, upon uh, further review, um, it's agreed that the, uh, the estimate for the replacement of the furnace uh, is ex still expected at uh, 27,500. Uh, and that that replacement would be tendered to get the best pricing upon adoption, yeah. Any questions about the furnace? Council McCann. Uh, I support this. Uh, I'm just curious, um, uh, can you refresh my memory as to um, how long we are expecting um, uh, our tenant to remain in the building, the Festival of the Sound? That's not a question I don't feel for tonight. I, I can just, uh, I mean, we're, uh, we had direction from Council to see if uh, renegotiate the lease with the, uh, with the festival. And so the, the, the hope and the intent is that they would be a longer term tenant. Okay, yeah, and that's exactly why you asked because I wondered if, if there was some interest in the near future to uh, relinquish the building, but that's fine. I support this. Did I ask for a mover and a seconder yet? Or? No, C Councillor Keith, Councillor Bachman. Council replaced the age furnace, uh, furnaces at the CP station on Avenue Road with one energy efficient model at a cost not to exceed 27,500. The furnace replacement will be tendered to get the best pricing. All in favor? That's carried. Salt dock, boat dock replacement. So um, questions were asked about the salt dock boat dock replacement. Um, the history of the, the ramp is that um, quotes were received uh, est with an estimated cost of 700000 uh, to replace the ramp. So this particular replacement is um, budgeted cost of 50000 and that is just to replace the, do the main or the dock um, with a similar dock to that which was installed at uh, Champagne Street docks. And this would include a three-ton anchor to secure the dock. Uh, the future dock replacement plan includes a similar dock replacement at Wabano Beach location, followed by the Shoppers Dock at, dock at the Town Dock, and that's not yet in the in the budget, but for, for the future. Questions? Council McCann. So I'm confused. Are we talking about seven hundred thousand for one uh, dock at the Salt Docks right now, or are we looking at putting this money into the other locations as well? Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor. So the seven hundred thousand was from a, a previous at previous estimate that was received at an earlier date. So we're not looking at doing that at this time. Um, but so this dock replacement doesn't include uh, the ramp because the estimate and what's required with that would be extensive. I don't know if Mr. Kearns has anything to add to that. Uh, certainly through you, uh, Your Worship. Um, my understanding is the $700,000 has more to do with more extensive work on the entire area, um, not just the boat ramp itself and dock. So the intention of this is the $50,000 uh, would allow us to replace the actual dock itself. So that replace the wooden um, dock that's there that's constructed wooden foam with a steel tube dock um, with... Um, sufficient anchors to keep it in place. And we did talk about this uh, previously, the, uh, the weather that's experienced over there is, is potentially significant with the wind and wave action. So the idea is that the dock does not extend beyond the edge of the wharf so that it's not uh, exposed to undue stresses from the wind coming in from the northwest, I guess. Uh, we will though, I, I've been reviewing some of the documents and there is an opportunity for us to reinspect kind of the, the boat launch area itself to make sure that it's um, adequately maintaining its integrity uh, when we have a dive company that comes in annually and does an inspection on the water 
intake at the water plant and uh, that was part of their offer when they're kind of launching in and out of there anyway so they're they're able to provide us with updated information so that we know exactly what condition the boat ramp itself is in so that sounds good then so it sounds <clears throat> this is something that would have a, a longer life expect expectancy than what we've been doing in the last few years Yes, certainly. Um, I think the expectation is 25 to 30 years is what they're saying. And I, I think realized life of some of those structures is beyond that. So. Great. Thank you. Councillor Keith. Thank you. Councillor McCann has an, uh, just asked uh, part of my question, but the other part was in reference to the dock. Um, once uh, matters are approved tonight, when would it be possible that work on the dock might occur? Uh, through you, Your Worship, um, that may be a very challenging question to answer given current circumstances, uh, but there was an indication that there could be up to a six month delay from order to delivery. So we will certainly try and expedite that as much as, as we can, um, but uh, there is that possibility. Councillor Barnaman. Well, that was part of my question because the work last year at Champagne Street didn't take place until the season was well underway. I'm not sure if I've got this 100% right. Uh, uh, is what's proposed at the salt dock the same design where there are two fingers? Uh, no, it'll be, it'll be basically replacing what's there now, just one running alongside of the salt dock? Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Um, that's the intention. Um, we did talk about the ability to, to mimic the profile of the wharf itself, just to try and maximize the amount of space. Um, but there will not be dockage, or you will not be able to tie a boat up on the wharf side. So it, it will be very close to the actual wharf itself, but just a single structure with one side that's accessible for docking, just strictly for launching and, and, and retrieving your boat. Any other questions? Okay, mover and seconder for the recommendation. Councilor McCann, Councilor Keith. The recommendation, recommended salt dock boat, damp, boat dock replacement includes a commercial dock designed not to protrude past, protrude past the main dock. Three ton anchors will secure the dock similar to the installation at Champagne Street docks. And the future dock replacement plan includes similar dock replacement at Wabano Beach location, followed by the shopper's dock at the town dock. All in favor? That's carried. Oh, Councilor Borman, sorry. I just, again, last year, uh, water levels were high and it was well into the season when we uh, undertook some re remediation at the, the Town Beach dock in particular. Mr. Kearns, I'm hopeful that, um, you know, in view of the fact that we're not gonna replace those this year, that we are able to do that at some point fairly early in the season uh, because uh, there were there were issues with respect to safety because of the water levels and such at, at those facilities last uh, summer and the water levels have been up and down so much that it's hard to tell what might be yeah. true come boating season. Through you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, and so that that's high on everybody's um, awareness actually at this point because I think uh, we're still seeing projections of higher potentially water levels. So we will undertake uh, appropriate remedial measures um, at all of our sites to make sure that um, we don't have those issues continuing. Garbage cans and recycling. Okay, uh, so uh, council inquired at the last budget meeting about the plans for garbage can replacement upgrades for 2020 uh, along the fitness trail. Uh, so, in 2020, $2,000 was spent from uh, the budget towards additional garbage cans along the fitness trail and waterfront. And there's a $2,000 in the proposed 2020 budget to go towards garbage can replacement and another 2,000 for, for benches along the fitness trail. <clears throat> so to continue the garbage can upgrade process, 
uh, an additional $8,000 is required. Uh, so this is just really for, for information uh, if council, does council have any questions about the garbage can replacement? Councillor Keith. It's more of a comment than a question. I think we need to go forward with this. It seems to me it's very important. There's health, there's safety, uh, there's uh, enjoyment of uh, our community, and uh, overall, we have to be also thinking of a strategic plan and the importance of tourism in our community. So I think this is a serious need. Oh, Council McCann? Yes, these, uh, these are garbage cans. Are they the ones that, uh, uh, ones that are for bears and raccoons uh, they can't get into? Bear proof is what I meant to say. <laughs> Through you, Your Worship, uh, certainly that, that's the intention, is to certainly make sure that they're appropriate for the locations that they're placed. Um, so there's, we will be looking at, uh, you know, which designs are available and certainly being aware of uh, accessibility for, uh, I guess, both humans and animals to make sure that they're appropriate. Thank you. Uh, if count if council wishes wish is to do the entire amount of the garbage can replacement um, uh, they could choose to to uh, transfer that amount from the tax rate stabilization reserve or whichever oh yeah if that's their their desire without impacting the current budget a, a resolution to that effect would just be fine I somebody Councillor Keith? I'd support the uh, transfer of the funds to, from the stabilization second, reserve. Second. Okay, seconded by Councillor Backman. Okay, any discussion on that? All in favor? That's carried then. Solar power crosswalks. So, uh, Mr. Kearns, would you elaborate on what the what the crosswalk entails? Certainly, uh, this uh, crosswalk I, I had to inquire myself um, because it's referred to as a, uh, in some instances, as a three-way um, crosswalk. Which, in in fact, it's near the intersection of three streets. Obviously, that's a, an interesting intersection. Uh, so the sidewalk that comes down off of Belvedere Avenue um, comes out perpendicular to um, Wabick Street. Uh, this is the location for the, the crosswalk itself. So the lights would be at that location um, with uh, additional crosswalk markings will be placed obviously on Avenue Road as part of the project wrap up. But the actual crosswalk itself is at that location in the vicinity of those three intersections or the intersection of those three roads. It's, uh, I believe, identical or at least very similar to the crosswalks that were installed at uh, Isabella and and then Isabella or on and William Street. Okay. Council McCann. Well, I fully support this. This is certainly needed in that area. That is an interesting intersection. The uh, the the warning lights they flash when they come on. Um, will drivers coming up Wabick Street heading towards the uh, CP trestle. Will they see anything before they go under the trestle? Because that's really where there's an issue with line of sight there. Through your worship, actually that, I asked the same question the other day. So um, it appears, and we'll certainly be looking at it um, during the design and installation. It appears that you will be able to see the, the actual lights as you're, as you're approaching the, the railway bridge trestle. Um, they should be placed far enough back. I th it, it, it appears that they will be visible, um, and certainly we'll be aware of that. Um, they need to be visible uh, from that side of um, as you're approaching the crosswalk. So, thank you, Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. So, Mr. Cairns, is it possible uh, that 
There will be additional signage also so that uh, it's not a big surprise when somebody is driving even before they approach that uh, crosswalk, just because of it, it is a funny angle, et cetera. And through you, Your Worship, um, I would certainly anticipate that there will be advanced warning signage. So there are typical um, sign layouts in the traffic manuals that are that municipalities follow that are produced by the province, which have typical layouts of advanced warning signs for these types of installations. Just for clarification, then when we're looking at advanced warning signs, is it possible to look at an advanced warning sign that maybe has some sort of light or something that really attracts you to really pay attention before you even get to the uh, solar powered lights just because like I said it is kind of a weird angle can that at least be looked into so that we can get as creative as legally possible and through you, your worship uh, certainly we can look at it um, you have to be we have to be careful in terms of uh, lights so I know those crosswalks and and I've I drive through them quite often um, and I know a lot of school children are using them, and I think that they're they're very apparent when the kids are active or anybody's activating the lights for the crosswalk. It, it's hard to miss the flashing lights, the intensity of them. So sometimes you want to be careful of having that in advance um, because the second instance of them is not quite as prevalent if you've already seen them. So we will certainly look at what we can do. I think we need hammers at some of these things that come out. I know somebody that the, the one just right down there on the corner of that church and Wabick. I know somebody that's been almost hit three times because the, the light was red and people dri driving straight through. Like, I don't know anymore why people can't stop for a red light. So, anyway, especially when it is red. Um, anything further on this one? Mover and seconder for the recommendation. Councillor McCann, Councillor Keith. Uh, staff recommend approving the project with funding for the additional 25,500 expenditure for a solar powered crosswalk at the intersection of Wabick Street, Belvedere Avenue, Avenue Road to be included in the larger project debenture. All in favor? That's carried. Oh, okay. So the next one is moved by Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Bornemann. Whereas aging storm water infrastructure combined with increasing extreme weather events has increased the need for storm water capital replacement and maintenance. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Council approve the creation of a storm water management reserve in the amount of $100,000 to be transferred from the Winter Control Reserve for the purpose of stormwater capital replacement and maintenance requirements. Does anybody want to talk about this one at all either or are we good? Ms. Uh, uh, yes, just that um, that we we recommend that 100,000 could safely be transferred to that um, new reserve um, without impacting the winter control um, operations and and what would be left remaining in winter control reserve would um, still meet the requirements of our policy of uh, five year uh, achieving a five year average good. in that sounds good thanks discussion yeah council mccann is this extra money that was saved maybe as a result of less snowfall than we anticipated or is it um, we're, we're where actually is the 100000 coming from? Yes. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, every, every year, either the surplus or deficit um, that is spent as compared to the budget on winter control is either transferred to or transferred from uh, the winter control reserve um, to help manage ups and downs um, with weather, like in the impacts of weather. Thanks. <clears throat> Anything further? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, next. 
Okay. So next is moved by Councillor Bornem and seconded by Councillor McCann. Whereas the town has submitted an expression of interest for an additional third party review funding. Now, therefore, be resolved that the unspent municipal modernization funding received in 2019 be transferred to a newly established modernization reserve for the purpose of funding projects that create efficiencies that lower and or avoid future costs. Any discussion on that one? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. No, because there's the um, Georgia Bay Avenue one. It says there's going to be additional information. Oh, we just received this? Okay. Um, mover and seconder then to receive the additional information with regard to storm drainage. Councillor Keith. Councillor Bachman. Uh, storm drainage on Georgian Bay Avenue. Received for information. All in favor? That's carried. Okay. Um, so the next then is moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Bachman that the 2020 operating capital budget as amended be approved and that the budget bylaw be brought forward for ratification following the adoption of this resolution. All in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> Next is moved by Councillor Backman and second by Councillor Keith that bylaw number 2020-7028 being a bylaw to adopt the operating and capital budget estimates for the year 2020. Um, all in favor? It's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Backman, second by Councillor Keith, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, high signed and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Borneman. Not sure whether Ms. Phillips or Mr. Harris or somebody wants to give a, a bit of a statement as to what taxpayers uh, should expect uh, as a result of this. Uh, yeah, I've got the statement which I read off at the beginning. So. Yeah, just, <clears throat> just, to, just to recap for, uh, for members of council, member of the public, um, there's uh, sort of two point components to the tax increase as, as we see it. The first, uh, first component is what it takes to, uh, what kind of a tax increase, what's the dollar requirement to increase the operations of the municipality. Uh, in, uh, in context, that's 1.2% increase in taxes, well below the requirements, the policy requirements that Council set, uh, which is the uh, CPI. CPI, as our benchmark for this, this year, is 2.1%. So it's 1.2%, which is well below CPI. One hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars, four hundred and seventy-eight, and we did have to increase taxes, really related to one particular issue. And again, we've had some properties that have been uh, reassessed and declared exempt for property tax purposes. The total impact on this year's budget is a loss of two hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars in revenue. We're able to offset a significant. A chunk of that, but that 1.2% increase in taxes or $131,000 relates to us not being able to fully offset the loss in revenue, so that required a small tax increase. In addition to that, uh, Council back, I think in 2014, started a policy of contributing to annually to a infrastructure reserve. Uh, well, there's a lot of infrastructure in town, and uh, Keeping with that commitment, a 1.8% increase, which has been made for the last number of years, 
uh, takes the 1.8% plus the 1.2% for operations for a total increase of 3%. The other thing that we have to think of too, and uh, you know, is, is yes, we we do, just as a reminder, we, we have um, an assessment or whatever that we have to pay to Belvedere, DSAB, that sort of thing, those organizations, but we also don't get any taxation from those. So really our contribution to those entities is a lot higher than what a lot of people realize. So in the case of Belvedere, uh, our taxes for that particular building would be around $50,000 or slightly more. So our contribution really to Belvedere and to the area for that is our contribution that we make in whatever we're allotted but also that amount that we're not getting in taxes. So we have more than one organization that is clawing away at our tax base that we're not able to, to capture. Councillor Bornemann and then Councillor McCann. So as a follow-up to the previous question, first I thank staff for their work on this. Uh, it's appreciated. Uh, Mr. Harris, uh, in the world that we live in and in recognition that we don't uh, control the entire scope of this budget as the mayor just pointed out. Um, we've seen other municipalities uh, uh, raise taxes at a much higher rate. Is, is, is what we're doing here sustainable? Is, is, uh, is this uh, something that uh, are we on the path for the long term or is this a, a you know a, a short-sighted uh, effort on our part a uh, good question i think um the most the greatest risk to municipal uh, municipalities is the raging infrastructure um and our uh, we just completed a water and sewer study and the water and sewer rates that we've got, if we continue to increase the water and sewer rates at roughly the rate of inflation, uh, their um, estimation, that's the consultants, we've hired some external experts, their uh, estimation is that it'll be self-funding, which uh, to answer your question is sustainable. I mean, there's always could be, always could be things come up that are unplanned and unanticipated, but right now uh, we're very pleased with the results of their study again uh, that where it's a self-sustaining system uh, the other side of the infrastructure is uh, infrastructure that's not water and sewer so that's the roads the sidewalks bridges just all of that anything that's not water and sewer related and as I said uh, in, in why the tax are going up uh, five years ago council said let's add 1.8 percent a year so that's been accumulating each year so 1.8 percent the dollars that that meant in 2014 another 1.8% in 2016, another 1.8% in 2017, and so on. So we've got, I think it's roughly about $1.5 million a year that goes from property taxes each year towards maintenance of infrastructure. That's a significant contribution. Many municipalities haven't tackled that. Uh, and I think uh, residents would appreciate their tax increase, a significant portion is going to maintain the roads and the sidewalks and the infrastructure that they all benefit from it. And people know that you need to uh, maintain things in order to to add to its life expectancy, make it safe and so on. So I think, I think we're on a very good path. Uh, the challenge for a municipality, and I think the mayor alluded to it, is our assessment base, our taxable assessment. We've got lots of assessment, but a lot of it the assessment doesn't pay taxes and we've just been hit with some more tax exempt properties so our challenge is maintaining that infrastructure on a tiny assess taxable assessment base and so you know we have uh, we've had issued debentures and we have limits as to how much we can fund through debt so that's that's the uh, that's the challenge we have to be very thoughtful as to what new debt we incur that's that's probably the biggest thing is be mindful of incurring more debt and what it's for but I, I think we're on a good path in terms of putting money away for infrastructure, whether it's water and sewer or non-water and sewer related infrastructure. And just to, 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 to just add something slightly to that before I go to Councillor McCann, I really have to commend the ratepayers of this community for the amount of support that they give through our infrastructure and our 
public spaces for the rest of the area. <clears throat> for the people that come here to work, and the people that come here to enjoy, shop, and various things, the ratepayers of this community really, really have to be appreciated. Councilor McCann. Uh, you're right, Mr. Mayor, and uh, often when, when people do complain about high taxes, I remind them that, that uh, the town is being very diligent in putting money into reserves uh, that uh, many communities uh, perhaps are not doing and will be caught uh, literally with their pants down at some point. So I have a, a, a question and a, and a comment. Uh, the $239,000 that uh, we're missing out on property that uh, has deemed uh, uh, not taxable, um, Mr. Harris, you said that we managed to uh, overcome some of that expense uh, in one way or another, but what about next year and the year after? Where is that money going to to come from? And it's kind of a hypothetical, uh, uh, irrhetorical question, but you get my drift. Uh, uh, through the mayor, um, part of the 239000 related to prior year's tax refund. So you pay that refund and you don't have to pay it again. But on a go-forward basis, a portion of that 239000 it's lost in 2020, it's lost in 21, it's lost forever. But if we raise taxes this year, which is what we're doing, to, to offset a, a significant portion of that, uh, then we've replaced annually the money from those affordable housing projects with a tax increase. So we won't have to deal with that each year. The question is, will there be more affordable housing projects become exempt? And we also had some assessment appeals that have been successful in some of the box stores. Uh, I mean, that's just kind of the reality of what we have to deal with. But, yeah. Exactly. Um, so uh, my, my next uh, point then is that, and you're right, you know, so is it Peter is paying for Paul more or less is what, what uh, you know, what it comes down to with regards to this. Now, with respect to what uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, what you're uh, making the comment, there are a lot of properties that we can't uh, realize taxes from, but I hope the taxpayer will realize that uh, there is a great return on value from uh, from some of these properties. Um, Belvedere does a tremendous amount of work for its people in the area. Uh, churches do as well. So I, I want I want people to remember that that these organizations um, do offer a good return on our value for our tax money. And I think about uh, the jobs and the money and the services that uh, are there for people. Belvedere is one of our, our larger um, employers in the area. So I hope people keep that in mind that that you know that that money just it, it, it circulates and it recirculates. I suppose, but we are getting a return on our value for that particular. Uh, buck. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Um, I'd have to agree with you uh, through the chair. I'd agree with you, but uh, the other communities around us are getting a fair return on our dollars as well, I because agree. these I agree. these services provide uh, these benefit. These organizations provide uh, services to or all the communities around us, and that's uh, that's that's the challenge. Councillor Keith. My comment is going along the line of uh, Mr. Harris's comment. It seems to me in the future uh, when uh, another development, say, um, that is very community oriented um, is being considered for the town itself, it, it seems to me, again, maybe this is an example of where other municipalities may be uh, considering at least uh, to uh, contribute to this because often the needs of other communities we are meeting and it seems to me there needs to be a way of um, getting some financial support from those communities and I realize that's not going to get solved tonight but I'm just saying you know it's something we do need to think about for the future anything further Councillor Burden, anything you wanted to add? I can't think of anything else. Okay, thank you. I'm good. All right, okay. Uh, all in favor then? And that's carried. I would like to thank staff for all of their efforts on this. Um, Ms. Phillips, you and your department, 
very well done. Uh, good budget, uh, nice layout. It was it was good to follow. Appreciate that. And um, so to all staff, thank you very much. Uh, council, thank you very much for for your work on this as well, and and uh, making sure you were in tune with what was going on in the budget. And um, uh, hopefully the residents will realize that, that it wasn't too bad, <laughs> I hope. Um, all right, so we got that one. Last is uh, moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Backlund that bylaw number 2020-7027 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council be considered as read a first time. All in favor? It's carried. Are all members in favor of having the second and third readings? <laughs> uh, carried. Moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Bachman. The bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. All in favor? And that's carried. So, prior to adjourning, I'd like to offer the following information to the public regarding the next council meeting. The next regular meeting of council for the town of Perry Sound is scheduled for Tuesday, April 7th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the council chambers located on the top floor of 52 Seagland Street. Under the circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic, please watch for updates regarding any cancellations or rescheduling of council meetings. The town encourages members of the public to watch the meetings as they are live streamed and recorded rather than in person. Please check news and public notices on our website at www.perrysound.ca for instructions to watch live or recorded council meetings and to obtain information on the council agenda and minutes. Your TV airs council meetings on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. following a regular council meeting. For Kojiko listings, contact www.yourtv.tv. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a good night.